I had shown mathematically that the universe must have had a beginning. My colleagues and I were now waiting for the observational evidence that would prove this to be true. The discovery, when it occurred, was the result of a complete accident. In the United States, two scientists, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, were testing a radio receiver built for microwave communication signals when they detected an unknown source of noise. Nobody could work out what it was, but 20 years earlier, Gamow and his colleagues had predicted a similar noise. Penzias and Wilson weren't at all interested in the Big Bang or cosmology and had no idea about Gamow's prediction. They discovered in their antenna uh, a, a, some noise that they couldn't explain. And they worked for many months to try and remove the source of the noise by fixing the joints and cleaning the antenna. Couldn't get rid of it. Then by chance, one of them had a conversation with a cosmologist who was thinking about Gamow's idea and the hot Big Bang. And instantly they realized this is what they'd in fact discovered. Gamow and his colleagues had been correct all along. All around us is microwave radiation that comes from the birth of the universe. This discovery was one of the most important in the history of science. We made a great leap towards discovering how the universe began. This is how we think it happened. It started with a Big Bang. A moment when the universe was thought to have had zero size and to have been infinitely hot. As the universe expanded, its temperature dropped. In some areas, galaxies formed. Within them, smaller clouds of hydrogen and helium gas collapsed to form the first stars. The universe began to fill with light. When the stars burnt up their fuel, they blew up in a tremendous explosion called a supernova. Throwing new elements like oxygen and carbon out into space. This dust from the stars is spread around the universe. It formed the planets, including the Earth. You, me, and even my wheelchair are made of stardust. The Big Bang Theory was incredibly successful at explaining the evolution of the universe. But there was still a problem. It didn't answer the fundamental question. It didn't explain how the universe began. What triggered the Big Bang? For a long time, nobody could think of an answer. But then an extraordinary idea was suggested that would take the world of physics by storm and solve the problem. In the 70s, nearly all scientists agreed that the universe must have originated in a Big Bang. But the Big Bang theory left many questions unanswered. Above all, it didn't explain what had started the Big Bang itself. What could make something infinitely small expand into the vast universe we see around us? When the answer came, it struck everyone as elegantly simple. American physicist Alan Guth proposed a solution.
Guth was investigating what happened in the first microseconds of the universe. He suggested that the universe expanded at a faster and faster rate. It would have been like the way prices go up and up at an accelerating pace. So Guth called it cosmic inflation. But inflation in the very early universe would have been much greater than anything on Earth. In a fraction of a second, the universe would have expanded to a trillion, trillion, trillion times its size. That's no ordinary expansion. And so the explanation would be no ordinary one either. In Guth's theory, the expansion of the early universe would have been caused by a strange type of matter, which behaved very differently to the ordinary matter we are familiar with. Since the days of Isaac Newton, it has been known that ordinary matter attracts other matter through the force of gravity. This is why things fall to Earth. But the new type of matter behaves in the opposite way. It repels itself. If the early universe was filled with this type of self-repelling matter, everything would be pushing against everything else and that would account for the sudden expansion of the universe. Very quickly, the exotic matter decays into hot radiation and ordinary matter. This is the fireball of the hot Big Bang. The universe is born. At last, it seemed, we had a complete explanation of the beginning of the world. But our hopes were premature. Inflation theory provided a nice mechanism for driving the expansion of the universe. But it also raised a new problem. Early inflation theory suggested what the universe would look like. It would be completely smooth. In other words, matter would be distributed evenly through space. That may sound sensible enough, but that's not at all what the universe is really like. It happens to be made up of the clumps of matter we call galaxies. What was needed was a mechanism by which the early universe could create galaxies. It was a problem I felt I could answer. My colleague Gary Gibbons and I had earlier proposed that an inflating universe would contain little thermal fluctuations which would be blown up as the universe expanded. In 1982, I pointed out that these fluctuations might provide the means by which galaxies could be created. It was a satisfying theory, and if true, it would be the last piece of the jigsaw, the missing link between the birth of the universe and the world we see today. But were we right? As a physicist, the work I and my colleagues do is largely theoretical and often can't be tested against observational evidence. But 20 years after we came up with our prediction, physical evidence appeared. In June 2001, NASA launched a satellite called MAP to make a detailed survey of the cosmic microwave radiation thrown out at the birth of the universe. If the thermal ripples we suggested really did exist, they would show up in the images produced by the satellite. And here's one of the photographs. Astonishing as it may seem, 
This is our earliest view of the universe, showing it as it was over 13 billion years ago.